Managing permissions is where we bring all the pieces together. This is the third part of principles and securables, and this is where we're going to determine what a principle can do to a certain securable. Now, one of the first tenets you need to understand about SQL Server Security is you can access a resource only after you've been directly granted permissions. This means that a particular your particular user has been granted permissions to an object or you've been indirectly granted permissions to an object. That means your user is a member of a role or a group and that role or a group has been granted permissions. Now, one of the basics in security in the Windows environment, this is both Active Directory and in SQL Server, is that anytime there is a deny permission, this blocks all grant statements. So even though I've been directly granted access to an object, and I've been indirectly granted access to an object through the membership in a group, if someone denies the membership to the group access, it, they've also denied it to me. Because anywhere there's, there's any kind of crossing of memberships or permissions and there's a deny, that deny is going to block all grant statements. Uh, we're actually failing towards security here, if you will. Now, one other thing you need to keep in mind in SQL Server 2005 is we now have inheritance involved in our permissions, and you're going to like this. This is tremendous. This will allow you to apply permissions to a large number of objects and only do it one time. And I'll show you an example here. But let's go out to the management console, the management studio, and let's go out into the database sales that I created. And in the security folder there, there's a schemas folder. Now there's a schema called Mark that we created in another video. And if I right click this schema and go to properties, you'll notice there's a permissions tab. And so I'll choose the permissions tab. And what I want to do is I want to give permissions to a particular user for every object that's in this particular schema. And so I'll click on Add, and then I'll click Browse, and I'm going to choose Frank. So OK, Frank. Now notice, I'm giving Frank permissions for every object in the schema. Now what permissions do I want to give him? Well, I'll give him Select Permissions, OK, and I'll give him Insert Permissions. Now what I just did by doing that, when I OK'd that, that means for every object in the schema, for every table, for every procedure, whatever, Frank now has those permissions. Now there's one other cool thing I want to show you about permissions in here, in these permission tools, and that is effective permissions. Notice if I highlight Frank and then, and then click effective permissions, it comes up and shows me that Frank has insert and select permissions on this particular securable, which is Mark, which is my schema. Hope that makes sense. And if I say OK, it takes me back. So one of the things I can do with these is to determine exactly where I want to set permissions from and let them cascade down or inherit across other items. Also, while I'm here, let me point out one other thing. Notice a grant grants permissions with grant. What is that? Well, if I do a with grant, notice it selects grant also. It grants the insert permission to Frank on Mark. It also gives Frank the ability to grant that permission to other people. If I don't want Frank to do that and I just want to grant him the insert permissions, I just check grant. Deny removes from Frank the insert capability and it will also explicitly remove that even if Frank can access uh, or have access to the insert on the mark schema through another group or a role. Okay, so that's a real broad look at managing uh, permissions. Now, in the next few videos, we'll drill into permissions a little bit more.